Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Welcome to our new podcast series, Data Movers. I'm your host, Jamie Scott Okataya, founder and CEO of JSA, along with my co host, Mr. Evan Christel, top B2B social media influencer. Great to be here and uh, welcome to this second episode of Data Movers, where we sit down with the movers and shakers in today's uh, telco and data center environment, supporting the network infrastructure re requirements of this new normal. Um, how are you guys doing? You know, it's uh, it's been uh, an exciting, crazy 2020. I mean, this is the first time that I just want 20, I just want the year to close and to start a new one. Normally I, I like to take advantage of every day, but this is an interesting year and you have to kind of create interesting new ways of celebrating the holidays together, right? Thanksgiving around the corner. Yeah, that's a great point. So Thanksgiving is coming up uh, as, as we drop this episode. What to do? That That's the big conundrum is, is how to celebrate Thanksgiving, if at all. Um, I personally, we, we've canceled the big family Thanksgiving, very sadly, and we're just going to go way up to a cabin, Airbnb up in the mountains in New Hampshire with our little core pod um, and, and celebrate there. But it really is uh, a challenge, and I think it's something that every person, every family is now facing across the country. Uh, what are your thoughts? What, how are you going to manage through this uh, holiday? Well, I, I'm a big fan of Zoom. Um, and uh, other similar platforms where you can get uh, more co collaboration and, and videos of folks talking. Uh, and so uh, we have had a Zoom Halloween where everyone got together and wore costumes. And uh, so we'll, we'll do some type of Thanksgiving where we'll get together and celebrate, and which it works for our family because we're on the West Coast right now and a lot of our family's East Coast. So in a way it extends our, our, our Thanksgiving table. Uh, so we can actually see all of our relatives and be efficient about it. So I don't know. Well, we're just going to have to make do and um, muddle through it like we have everything else this year. But I look forward to, uh, you know, seeing family at least over Zoom. But before we get to that, let's get on with Data Movers and our next guest. Yes, I am very, very excited about our next guest. Um, as you know, here at Data Movers, we like to really dive into the background stories, career highs and lows, um, and, and get our guests unique perspectives on the future of our industry. And so when we were creating Data Movers, we really were thinking a lot about this particular guest in mind, Mr. Philip Marangella. He is the CMO of Edge Connects. Philip, welcome to Data Movers. Thank you, Jenny. Good to be on. Thanks. Thanks for having me for one of your early episodes and good to meet you, Evan, as well. Welcome to the show. I, I, I noticed you're calling in from Virginia, the data center capital of the of the universe. Uh, everything keep keeping the Internet humming down there. Um, I was actually checking out your bio and it says you have over 20 years of experience in the industry, including all the way back to Nortel. And some of us remember who Nortel is. So how old do you feel? That's my first uh, question. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I don't know where you're going with that. I, you're just, <laughs> I, I am <laughs> realizing I'm pretty old, right? And uh, yeah, you're bringing back some uh, mixed memories there uh, in terms of Nortel and, and other places that I've, I've worked in the past. But, you know, been in this space a long time in terms of telecom and from satellite to, you know, the likes of Nortel to MCI and Verizon. And then... Uh, been in the data center for space for a little over 10 years. And yep, I'm, I'm in Ashburn, a little data center market that, that could. Um, so, uh, so yeah, thanks. You know, you can tell from the hairline that, that uh, I've been around a while. <laughs> <laughs> and so going, let's start from, I don't know, eight year old Philip Marangella. What oh. did you want to be back then? Oh gosh. Uh, I don't, you know, that's a good question. I, I actually think I moved around a lot as a kid. And I actually think when I was eight, I was actually living in Australia. My parents decided to, they weren't military. People always ask me that. Um, they just, uh, they were kids of military. So maybe it was in their blood and they moved around a lot. So 
think I was in Australia and look, my first word was car. So I wanted to be a race car driver, right? So I was everything cars, you know, I had every matchbox and I just knew all like everything. So I, yeah, that was uh, definitely a race car driver. And you know, that's how I ended up in the data center industry. <laughs> well, we, we still have the need for speed in the data center world. So it's a perfect right. segue. Like but you have a very storied career. You were at Verizon, uh, I mentioned Nortel, you went to Equinix, uh, and now Edge Connects. So what was that like going, you know, between these different uh, cultures and, and companies? Yeah. Well, you know, it was interesting coming, well, first off, to your point, coming from like the network space and Verizon. Um, you know, when I first joined Equinix, you know, the data center was, was about the facility, right? And, uh, you know, how strong and robust or big and, and sophisticated it was. But Looking at it from a network perspective, this is where we came in with the interconnection aspect, right? And and yes, it you know interconnection it had existed, but what that enabled, right? And to specifically focus on kind of communities of interest in the ecosystems, whether it's financial connecting to networks, networks to networks, cloud to network, and and so forth, and that's what we really tried to kind of focus on and build at Equinix, right? And look what it's become today, right? It's an absolute behemoth. Um, and it's just a fantastic company and a bellwether for the data center industry. Um, you know, I had an opportunity to join Edge Connects. I love the model. This was about five years ago. Um, it, you know, different model focused just on service provider companies. So content, cloud, network, and so forth, and giving them exactly what they wanted where they wanted, when they wanted, right? So rather than making them kind of come to us, we would go where they wanted to go. And that was, you know, hence the name Edge Connects was bringing their content, bringing their data, bringing their networks closer to their end users and build the data center in the kind of best location between the service provider and the end user, right? And that's what drove the edge, right? And this was, you know, we did it way before it was cool because now everybody's talking about the edge um, and, uh, you know, so we've continued to build that out and grow and have a global platform now that's been very successful. Uh, yeah, you can say very successful. I mean, you guys are on a tier, Randy Brockman, of course, CEO, uh, and, and the rest of, uh, your, your management team, unbelievable. You, you just were acquired by EQT making all sorts of headlines. Yeah, um, and I know you have recently oversaw the entire public relations marketing efforts uh, of that uh, big acquisition by like EQT. What's that feeling like? Were any any inside scoop or indigestion that you might be feeling <laughs> from that? Yeah, look, I don't. It's it's. Um, I'm very grateful, right? You talked about Thanksgiving before. Uh, you know, going back to that, I'll just say I'm sure there's a lot of people that are happy that they can't travel. Thanksgiving, you hear all the horror stories around uh, the family dinners and so forth. So it might be, you know, beneficial for the uh, continuity of some family relationships if they can, if, if you have to stay at home. So, um, but again, very thankful for the success we have uh, had and, and continue to have, particularly during COVID, right? When so many people have, have struggled and suffered and so forth. And I think the data center industry overall um, has proven itself beyond resilient and, and is, is essential to enable what we're doing today, right? Whether it's working from home, uh, studying from home, gaming, streaming, everything, right? This, our homes are the new edge, as we like to say. And without the data centers that are helping all these services kind of deliver, uh, you know, quality solutions to end users, um, you know, we wouldn't be as, as in, the, in the position we are in today. And so I think it's a lot of those trends and those requirements that are driving our business and our success um, as an industry overall. And then obviously Edge Connects has, has been, um, you know, profiled and showcased um, um, in terms of what we do. And, and it's a testament to be acquired by EQT, uh, which is based out of Europe, Swedish Infrastructure Fund. And so... That will only allow us to help us continue our growth and, and build upon our strategy to continue uh, growing internationally and, and, and supporting our customers around the world. Fabulous. You mentioned gaming as a, a side note. 
I've, I've taken up gaming again after about a 35 year hiatus. Yeah. Um, so as far as I can tell, everyone is video game playing video games now, including grown men like myself. Yeah. I assume you've seen that huge spike in, in traffic and requirements coming as well. Yeah. I mean, hats off to you, Evan, because I'm intimidated. I, I watched my son, he's playing Fortnite and, and whatever this, you know, shooting games and all that stuff. I don't, I can't do the, all the, if it's not a simple joystick, it's not, you know, Pac-Man or Caterpillar. So I'm telling you how old I am. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm just intimidated, but, uh, but definitely. Right. And he's thankful for, Hey dad, thanks for the high speed internet. Right. That, that allows him to game. Right. And, you know, everything, you know, I often talk about this theme of re-architecting the internet because at the edge, everybody's, consuming and creating vast volumes of data and doing all these things. And, uh, you know, it's traditionally always been this kind of download centric, unidirectional kind of traffic flows. Right. And what, what we see now is that, you know, and you throw in things like TikTok, all this stuff's happening at the edge, going back to the core or going to the other edges. And so this is the role that we help in terms of alleviating the bottlenecks and the traffic flows. Uh, for the internet so that it can function. So you can have these gaming while somebody else is streaming Netflix and I'm on a Zoom call and all simultaneously without any interruptions or the death spiral of, you know, rebuffering or whatever it may be. But but tell us, you, you know, we're speaking of Zoom, you're obviously working from home. You, you have a distributed team. How's that all going? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, you know, my team was always distributed and some of them were already working at home whether they're in the uk or or elsewhere and we were always flexible so we didn't really miss a beat uh, you know speaking for myself and my team um you have to adapt you have to try to over communicate um because you just don't have the impromptu in-person you know meetings at work but i was a road warrior to start with i was always traveling i would see jamie you know, you know, whether it's in Hawaii at PTC or some other event. And so I was traveling a ton. So I'll be honest with you. I'm, it took a little while to get used to it, but I'm actually happy not getting on that plane every other week and flying, you know, and, and I'm a big dude, so I'm not cramped in, in, you know, premium economy as they like to call it, which is still very small for me. But, uh, um, so I'm enjoying working from home to be honest. And, uh, you know, getting more family time and, you know, kind of work-life balance. No yeah, problem. premium economy, that, that's what I call COVID light. Um, <laughs> so I, I don't miss miss that either. So yeah. so tell us, just, uh, do you have any funny or embarrassing Zoom moments uh, that you can share with the audience? <laughs> well, nothing like you've heard of recently, let's be clear. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, uh, that'd be horrific. Um, but I do remember I had I had to do like a panel, and I I thought I was joining a preparation call for you know the panel which was going to happen at a later date. So and it was it was one that was taking place in Europe. So it was extremely early our time on a holiday weekend, right? So um, you know waking up 15 minutes before rolling into that and realizing no this is the panel so I had to go on dark for a little bit and just say oh my you know video's not working let me check before and you know properly get dressed and fortunately I didn't have to comb my hair but uh, but it <laughs> yeah and I don't even know what I said so I just you know I just didn't watch it and just prayed that I didn't put my foot in it. Well, I'll tell you, working uh, on Zoom, distributed workforces, of course, uh, the bandwidth uh, needs with gaming and, and others. Tell us your thoughts on how COVID might continue to impact the industry as we push forward. Uh, so good question. I mean, look, they just came out and said, you know, that they got a, uh, a uh, vaccine that, that uh, you know, fingers crossed, you know, is 90% effective. So hopefully that plays out and and, uh, you know, we can we can get back to whatever normal that is. But that said, right, I think many of the trends we were already seeing were driving tremendous demand and growth in the data center space. I think what COVID did is just accelerated and exacerbated the digital transformation that many enterprises were, were already planning to undertake. And, you know, the, the migration to cloud is just rapidly growing 
And, you know, some of these, but you already had other technologies, right? Industrial Internet of Things, uh, autonomous vehicles, um, smart cities, all these things were driving the need and demand for more network, more data centers, more connectivity and all that kind of stuff. And it just accelerated in, in whether or not this, this vaccine proves, you know, the, the, the savior and, and we can kind of get back to our normal lives. I think you're going to see a lot more people continue to work from home because you're still remaining productive, right? And, you know, the, the savings from having and the headache of trying to go to work, um, you know, I don't know if we're going to have events like we used to do, Jamie, like, to be honest, there's like, man, that was a lot of travel, a lot of headaches and, and so forth. And, you know, people are quickly adapting. I, I think, you know, so even if, you know, there is a vaccine and COVID goes away, I think we're, we've kind of changed forever in many respects of how we work, how we interact um, and, and um, you know, how we go about our business. I don't know what you're seeing and, and uh, you and Evan, but, um, you know, certainly for us, this is, this is kind of going to continue in many respects the way it is, you know? Yeah, but thanks for throwing out that uh, PTC Hawaii reference, that, you know, that usually happens in January. That was a nice yeah. little yeah. reflection on an event that who knows when we'll come back. For folks on video, you, you, they may caught a glimpse of a lot of bracelets you're wearing. What's the, <laughs> is that like a lot of hats? Yeah. Philip, what, what's the significance yeah. of, of that? I, look, like I said, I travel a lot and... You know, it was just, I got one for each family member and it just reminds me of them when I'm on the road and, and whatever. I think it's kind of cool or hip, whatever. <laughs> I got these in Costa Rica. They're called Pura Vida bracelets. So they, they, they're cool. So I don't know. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it is, it's the new, uh, the new closeness of family the, you know, one of the silver linings around COVID you want your your family near you. You, ha you have the ability to have um, at least you know those you're quarantining with near you. All right. So, dare we talk about it? Any thoughts on how the election <laughs> or non-election? I don't know. It's somewhat election. Uh, how is that uh, impacting our industry and uh, uh, our future? Good, bad, otherwise. Do we want to uh talk about this? Yeah, I mean, look, I live in, I'm outside of DC, so I'm in the, I'm in the eye of the hurricane or whatever. So, uh, and, uh, you know, I was actually in DC this weekend, you know, so you're asking, you know, the effect of a new administration potentially on the data center space. Um, I, I don't necessarily see from a data center perspective, much difference, right? Um, I think for maybe some of our customers, you know, some of the privacy issues around uh, Facebook and Google and the data privacy and so forth will, will come into play and what that impact might have around, you know, who owns the data and your right to your information. Um, you already see it in Europe, right, where it's far more regulated and, and so forth. And that's drive, you know, with GDPR for us, you see a lot of data center operators building in each and every country because they have to keep the data local within that within those borders and so forth. So um, so certainly from a data sovereignty perspective, from a sustainability perspective is another area, right? Where, you know, again, particularly in Europe, they're more vocal around being green and so forth. But we as an industry, um, you know, um, we're, we're a member of the infrastructure masons, which constitutes many uh you know the builders of the digital age so many of the you know big companies google and microsoft and apple and all these guys and we're very good at self-regulating right and trying to be green trying to be efficient because there's there's economic benefits and it's the right thing to do right and so they've put out stringent goals by 2030 to be carbon neutral or carbon negative even right and so we're trying to work with them ourselves as many in the industry to be extremely green as possible um, but again, you know, trying to work with, you know, the government agencies and figuring out how to be green will be another important, I think, regardless of, of the administration goal and effort within the industry. Great point. Now let's go from the serious to the trivial. Um, let, let's do some fun facts. Uh, so tell me what, what comes to mind, uh, right off the top of your head. So, uh, plenty of room for embarrassment. Um, uh, <laughs> Apple or, or Android? Apple. Okay. Sorry. What's your greatest achievement? 
Hmm. I'd say uh, my family, my kids. Good answer. Speaking of Thanksgiving, if you could watch one movie on repeat 24 hours straight, what would it be? Oh, shoot. I don't know. Maybe since uh, with the passing of Sean Connery, I could do a, you know, a James, you know, I think they always showed a James Bond. uh, (laughs) Oh, good one. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a good option, and if you could have dinner with one person, dead or alive, through history, who would that person be? Uh, well, one would well one would be not to be sappy, but one would be my dad. He passed away about two years ago, um, and that would be that would be cool one more time uh, with him. But the traditional answer, I guess, somebody like I thought it would be really cool, like a, like a Leonardo da Vinci, right? One of these like amazing renaissance guys that are just smart with everything from science to politics to philosophy and just just those guys just blow my mind like you know the the ben franklins those kind of guys that are just you know brilliant across all the spectrums and just tap into their little brain for 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 lunchtime would would be pretty cool oh great great choice at first i thought you said leonardo dicaprio and i was a bit no, 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 no. by your, yeah. your answer. But no, yeah, Leonardo yeah. da Vinci would be a good one. Translation yeah. might be a little bit of an issue. Yeah. But in all seriousness, thanks so much for joining us, Philip. We really look forward to watching your success. And, um, you, you know, you and your team's mission is, is really uh, important, uh, particularly in this time as we're glued to screens at home and really broadband and digital is is literally like become life and death and a reality for us all so yep. thanks so much and and good luck with the holidays right. yeah awesome thanks for having me and yeah have a happy thanksgiving happy holidays appreciate it yeah happy holidays and thank you so much for your time um and i could not imagine dealing with covid without the internet so thank you for all you do it's so important. I'm talking about Renaissance now. We're just having a small role, so but <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> Listeners today, if you enjoyed our Data Movers podcast, as I did, be sure to check out jsa.net slash podcasts for upcoming Data Movers episodes releasing every other week on Wednesdays, uh, as well as other JSA podcast episodes there. And, and follow us and engage with us on Jay Scotto and Evan Kerstell. We actually will engage and retweet you, so we look oh. forward to your feedback. And as always, happy networking.